I'll uh, apologize in advance. I was uh, going to spend about 30 minutes covering what the Forest Service is up to. So now I'm going to spend about 10. And I'll leave it to Mr. Coleman and Sue Alexander and a retired ranger in the back if you have questions. Uh, I've got to catch a plane here shortly. So um, in a nutshell, in southeast Alaska, about 80% of the land base is national forest. When you add all the other federal agencies, it's about 92% of the land base. Uh, pretty much every project that I'm going to talk about briefly is either on or it's affected by or affects public lands. So I intended to have a, a map on the wall, but I'm not going to wait for that. I'll leave it behind. We have mapped out all of the existing uh, facilities that currently exist in southeast Alaska and all the projects that we're currently working on. And they range from the community of Hyder to the community of Yakutat. And we're currently working on about 27 different projects, both uh, uh, hydro and geothermal, that uh, is either in the investigation phase or the NEPA analysis phase or actually in the permitting phase. Um, before I get to that, I'd like to uh, cover a few things that we have recently completed. Uh, first off, there has been a significant boom in interest in developing of hydro projects in the last couple of years. And unfortunately, our budget to accommodate those projects has not moved one inch. In fact, it's dropped significantly. So we have invested in a uh, point of contact a energy coordinator for the Tongas. Her name is Barb Stanley. She currently resides in Ketchikan, Alaska, and has been significantly involved in most every project that uh, I'm going to cover. Uh, the map on the wall. It is the first time that I know of that we have mapped out all these projects, and it's a uh, very good resource for what exists and what's about to exist or what potential could exist. Uh, we also recently completed the 2008 forest plan. Um, and I hate to tell you, Bernie, but we spent 21 years and $23 million putting the plan together, and hopefully uh, it's going to stick around long enough to implement some of the, uh, the uh, ideas in it. But that plan is a permissive document that will facilitate, I assume, most of the projects that I've seen come across my desk to date. The map, um, realizing you can't see, I put it up for reference mainly. One side of the, the uh, column is uh, existing projects. The other side is those that we're currently working on. Um, if you would like a copy of that, we have it on our website. We can make it available hard copy, but it's a very valuable resource. Um, in the forest plan itself, it has identified all the corridors that, uh, uh, not all, I'll get back to that, the potential corridors for utility, or utility corridors, uh, Bradfield Canals is identified. Uh, we ran into a fairly significant amount of uh, issues with a cake to Petersburg intertie. Everybody I talked to had a different route for that intertie, so we finally um, took everybody's suggestion, kept it in the planning record, and made all the land use designations around from Cake to Petersburg, with the exception of those that were done by Congress, that were permissive in getting that corridor created. In fact, we also worked with the state of Alaska and created a permanent easement that if the proposed action for that corridor goes within that existing easement, my life becomes much simpler. Uh, NEPA becomes much simpler, if at all. But I suspect that uh, the proposed action is going to be outside that corridor, and then we will work with whoever the proponent's going to be uh, to get the environmental analysis uh, to a record of decision so that project can be completed. So some of the recent uh, uh, accomplishments um, besides the planning, we worked with the state of Alaska, and uh, well, at the time was the four-dam pool, now the two-dam pool, or the southeast Alaska, or southeast uh, Energy Power Association Authority and completed the Swan Lake uh, to Ketchikan intertie. Um, that EIS was done quite some time ago. Funds were finally found to start the construction of that project. About halfway through that project, uh, the funds ran out, and it didn't look at the time that that project was ever going to be completed. Um, but we worked with the state um, and uh, the Alaska delegation, and finally that project is done, actually producing power, has been a significant uh, benefit to the community of Ketchikan. We also worked with the community of Angoon. We worked with them, developed an EIS for the Thayer Lake EIS. 
That has been accomplished. Um, the next phase of that will be the design um, permitting and actual funding for the construction. Um, we've also worked with a whole host of other folks, like Dorothy was one uh, just outside of Juneau, another one up by Skagway. Uh, we're working with a whole host of new applicants. Um, the Probably the most significant at the moment is the Cascade uh, Creek LLC and the Soli River uh, APNT project. The Solar River project is a FERC project, Federal Energy Regulation or Regulatory Commission. Uh, we are responding to that. Um, Bob in the back has presented us with a draft EA. We're looking at that for comments, and our requirement now is to create four E conditions that uh, go into, I guess, what will be allowed for that project to be developed. We assumed here in the next few weeks that we'll see a a uh, presentation or a uh, submission by the Cascade Creek LLC, and we will go through a similar process. In the meantime, Blue Lake has always also been mentioned. It's an increase of capacity of an existing structure. We're working with the community of Ketchikan for Whitman Lake and a whole host of others, and the list goes on. Um, I do want to mention in the short time I have is that we have made a significant investment in biofuel. Um, uh, use. Um, I was trying to beat Sea Alaska to the punch in getting a bio facility set up, but uh, uh, they didn't have to work with uh, another federal agency and they beat me to the punch. And I have looked at that facility that they currently have running just down the street here, and it has a huge potential for Southeast Alaska. We grow biomass in Southeast Alaska. In fact, if you compare our forest to the other national forests in the system, and if you were going to create biomass, the Tongass would be the place to do it. It would be the center of the universe for building biomass. And I think there's huge potential for using that resource in heating our facilities as well as generating electricity. We've worked with the Craig community. They have a, a boiler in place that heats a swimming pool, a couple of schools, and it's fueled by Viking Lumber Company out of Klawak, which essentially generates uh, biomass from uh, logs from the Tongass National Forest. We've worked with the U.S. Coast Guard in Sitka, Ketchikan, and Juneau to replace existing oil-fired systems with biomass. Uh, high probability that the Ketchikan system would be first online. We've also worked with the uh, GSA, Gover or Government uh, Services Administration, for the federal building in Ketchikan, Alaska. And I have to tell you, if it hadn't been for Mr. Weinstein in the back and Senator Begich, we'd still be burning oil-fired fuel in that place. Uh, we are currently under contract to install a biomass facility in there. And in the meantime, by the grace of the Economic Recovery Act, we managed to make an investment in the Discovery Center in Ketchikan to produce a biomass facility there. In the meantime, we're looking at five district offices. I think they're Wrangell, Petersburg, Thorn Bay, Craig, and Sitka to generate uh, or put biomass facilities in each one of those. If you have not had the opportunity, and I'm probably speaking out of turn, to walk across the street and see what's been done in Sea Alaska's building, you ought to. Um, I have been overly impressed. Say again? It's always available. All right. The individual in the back is uh, responsible for keeping the thing maintained. Um, and I've been quite impressed with his knowledge and, uh, and I guess the uh, the desire by Sea Alaska to install something like that. But I was expecting much more significant facility and a lot more uh, expense installed in the thing. But at the end of the day, it's a very compact facility that meets all the requirements that anybody could ever dream of. But the issue with it at the moment is how to get the, the pellets from Washington State to that facility now. And like normal, um, bypassing the largest biomass production facility on the planet. So we're working with communities on Prince of Wales Island and Viking Lumber Company to see if a um, pellet mill can be established. There's also an interest in Ketchikan that's using waste material generator from federal buildings, paper, uh, cardboard, and it's probably going to generate a pellet facility in Ketchikan to, to feed our needs. So again, I apologize for closing quick, but um, the uh, because of the nature of the business that we have to deal with, with all the federal regulations and the funding sources that we have in order to implement this, the Tongass has prioritized how we're going to respond to requests for uh, new hydro facilities and new alternative energy facilities. And essentially, 
Whatever project is currently underway will be our number one priority. The second priority will be responding to FERC timelines. Um, we are in a situation that we have, to give you Solar River as an example, that EA is on the street. We've got 90 days to respond. And if we don't respond, FERC goes on with our process. So we are under the, a very finite timeline when FERC is running through their process. The third priority, and probably the one that's near and dearest to my heart, is to any rural community that requests um, an application for a project that gets them off of biomass or gets them off of um, fuel and gets them onto an alternative energy will be one of my top priorities. Um, I've already mentioned Angoon. We're working with the community of Cake, and there's a whole host of other ones that have potential, including uh, Little Port Walter on the south end of Baranoff Island. Unfortunately, the fourth priority um, is to expand existing capacity like Sitka. Um, we're responding to them, but we're trying to They've already got hydro. Um, it will increase their capacity, but my feeling of putting our investments into these rural communities currently on fuel ranks higher. And then lastly, uh, the export of power out of Southeast Alaska uh, would be my last priority, <clears throat> mainly because the, the amount of time and energy it takes to put into that. The Bradfield Canal could be potentially one of those, but if it goes down a FERC process, then I have no other choice but to respond to it first. So in terms of my needs, which is where I will end this, um, I have worked with a lot of folks in Southeast Alaska for a number of years and have visited every community in Southeast Alaska with the help of the Rangers. And we have a laundry list of needs in every one of these communities. And quite frankly, that laundry list could um, take over my budget for the next 10 years. So what we are trying to do, and I won't get into the details, Randy can fill in behind me and Sue as well, but there's been a, um, an effort to try to prioritize not only this list of projects, but projects associated with forest uh, products, um, ocean products such as mariculture, uh, tourism, and then uh, natural um, renewable energy. That effort is going on as we speak. Um, there are four cluster groups working on trying to connect the dots on what all the needs are and prioritize that. We hope to generate a strategic plan, so to speak, out of this prioritized list so we can start focusing our energy on components that basically for this investment there are a lot of other side benefits that will be generated from it. It's been tagged the transition framework, uh, the Juno and Economic or Juno Economic and Development uh, Committee has got a contract to produce that document. Hopefully, we will be done with it by April. If you are not part, this group needs to be part of the renewable energy cluster analysis. And I realize it's another planning effort, but it is a critical piece to start identifying where the shortness, where the critical dollars that I have can be best invested now. And then once we take care of priority one, we'll move on down. So I haven't heard anybody mention it. Um, Brian Holst is the coordinator for this effort uh, for JEDC. And if you have an interest in being on the renewable energy group, I, I ask that you get a hold of Brian. The forest products group has always already met. The fisheries group or ocean products group met Monday this week. And I don't know what the schedule is for the other two, but I suspect that the other two are meeting this week. If you can get on it, it would be a great benefit to yourselves as well as mine. So in closing, the biggest obstacle I have at the moment is a very limited resource in order to respond to all of these projects. And if I can get the prioritization out of the effort we're working on or another uh, effort like I assume that this group could do, it would greatly facilitate basically spending our resources wisely in order to achieve what you're trying to do. So again, I apologize. I've got to catch a plane and um, appreciate the time.